this may look like any other lab. The white coats, equipment, and activities might look familiar, but what's going on here is far from ordinary. I've never heard of any other place that's quite like this. It's being talked about, it's being written up, and I think it's a, it's a shining example of what can happen. This is the Parker H. Petit Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience at the Georgia Institute of Technology, IBB for short. I definitely feel like a kid in a candy store. I mean, it's a really fun place to do research. IBB was way ahead of the times. Uh, there's a number of our peer institutions that are just now putting new institutions uh, whose vision and mission are very similar to IBB. IBB is a place where collaboration isn't just encouraged, it's required. A place where the term interdisciplinary isn't just a buzzword, it's simply the way research is done. And the environment here in IBB is such that you essentially can't even exist here without doing interdisciplinary research. It seems like if you, any of your colleagues are not collaborating, you wonder if there's maybe something a little bit odd about the way they're doing business. IBB's origins go back to the early 1990s. That's when Georgia Tech, with the generosity of Parker H. Petit, made the decision to invest in interdisciplinary research to bring its strength in engineering to the complex research problems of the life sciences. But I think everyone recognizes that some of the more important problems that exist for society, uh, and not just in the bio world, but in general, are ones that can only be addressed by different disciplines coming together and working together. Sounds simple, but that isn't the way scientific research is traditionally done. IBB was designed from the ground up to blend departments, to dissolve the barriers between disciplines. Designed with a recognition that addressing the questions currently facing science requires a new strategy. I think in any area of science and engineering, if you don't do interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary, you're doomed. If you think you're going to work in your little cubby hole as a scientist, I think those days are gone. It's really moved to a point now where it's not just a novelty, but something essential in order to answer the kinds of questions that we need to answer at this point. To get the dialogue going, Tech designed what is literally an interdisciplinary building a building where every element of the design supports interaction and collaboration. Faculty offices are clustered in neighborhoods that mix engineers and scientists. Labs are in wings that house multiple faculty members in an open design. The, the walls are physically just not there, so the students actually sit together from different labs and interact and, and share different techniques and so forth. Faculty and students also share what IBB calls core facilities. Powerful equipment like mass spectrometers and confocal microscopes. Having those resources under one roof with dedicated staff to keep them running and to train students and other researchers how to use them and also by being able to pool IBB resources to pay the major expenses associated with them has been a great help. People have to physically come here for certain things and that they need to uh, do their research. And, you know, passing each other in the hall may sound like just a, a trivial thing, but it's really not. Um, you need that kind of interaction. Even the IBB building's large atrium is designed to promote interaction and collaboration. There are plenty of comfortable places to sit and meet, even a cafe with coffee and good food. The atrium is uh, busy all day long as people are coming and going and meeting each other and talking. I always joke with my friends, if I come here to get lunch, I'm bound to meet more people than uh, that I meet during the rest of the day. <laughs> then there's the issue of materials from biology. IBB also hosts seminars, symposiums, and other special events featuring world-renowned researchers that draw people to the atrium from all over campus. We want IBB to in some sense be the heart of the bio community on the Georgia Tech campus, to be that interface between the sciences and engineering. And they've succeeded. IBB has expanded well beyond the walls of this building. There are now over 100 faculty associated with IBB. And as it evolved, 
some of those investigators joined to form centers to investigate ovarian cancer, regenerative medicine, molecular evolution, and even drug development and delivery. IBB creates the environment and provides the facilities and in some cases the resources to get these types of interdisciplinary centers off the ground. Sometimes we'll need a mixture of scientists and engineers to, to tackle a big problem and, and they're right next door. They're right in the same laboratory area with you. Ready for surgery? Yes. Of course, being on the cutting edge of science is just one of the missions at IBB. Another is to train the next generation of investigators. There's nothing more exciting than working with really good students and we have that luxury of having really good students. Those pre-doctoral and post-doctoral students are on the front lines in the labs at IBB. Learning the science and the techniques, but also an interdisciplinary style of inquiry that will define the future. We provide a very unique and robust training environment for our, for our graduate students and postdocs. And I can tell you, um, my students have done terrific. Although no formal classes are taught in the building, IBB is working actively to inspire and develop undergraduates as well. The Petit Undergraduate Research Scholars Program brings college students from throughout Atlanta into the lab for a full year to conduct research. I'm excited to see undergrads that are coming into my laboratory and are now expressing interest in going exactly into this field. This is our nanofiber mesh. There is excitement at IBB about what those students might see in the coming years. A sense of momentum. A sense that for all that has been accomplished so far, the best is yet to come. I think we're definitely a player and I think what we're hoping is we're moving to the front of the pack. We get it. We know what the end goals are. We know what it takes to get there and we're not afraid to kind of take some of those risks to move those things forward. Well, what goes on down here every day is exciting. There's some extremely bright young people doing some extremely exciting projects. And it'll, it'll change the quality of life that we have in this country and worldwide eventually. There's going to be some major breakthroughs as a result of what's going on.